there, Liz here, and we are at EMO's Creative Studio, where anything and everything you create is beautiful because you created it. And today, we're going to talk about basting or and or fabric spray. In the screen right there, you're going. You are looking at all the different basting or fabric sprays I have purchased in the last couple of years. I've tried them out. This is a recommendation from me video on what I prefer and I would like to use after using these different products uh, with a reasonable time length in between. So let's first of all talk about the very first one I purchased and it's the Spray and Bond Fusible Adhesive this is an aerosol spray. As the bottle can says, this is good for applique, home decor, patches, and crafts. Um, what I predominantly use these sprays for are sandwiching my quilts so that I can either hand tie or uh, machine quilt the quilts together. Or recently I started doing applique, so I, I'm using one of these products for applique. Um, let me again reiterate, this is my personal recommendation on what product I use. This is not a paid-for endorsement. I have not been paid for, nor has the product been sent to me for free. I've spent my own money on each and one of these products, but I want to share with you what I like and my recommendation. Okay, again with the Spray Bond Fusible Adhesive. This is the very first spray I ever purchased. I've used it quite a bit. You can hear it's an aerosol spray. It did a good job. Um, it, yeah, it did a good job. It didn't 100% hold my pieces together. Uh, that was okay because I still had to pe uh, pin my uh, sandwich together. It also did not gum up my needle. So the next one I wanted, the next item I decided to try out is this fabric fusion glue. It's a permanent fabric adhesive. It is by Aileen's. This was purchased online. The other bottle I just showed you, I believe I purchased it at a big box um, store. Um, I don't know if it was uh, I don't remember one of the big which one of the big box stores, but I purchased it there. This one I ordered from uh, online from Amazon. This is a uh, glue that you pour out. You tip, you cut up, cut off the tip, and you can see that I've lost the cap to this. So I always have to if I'm going to use this, I have to poke a pin or a needle in there to get it open. You just dip it and you dot what you're going to be uh, fusing together or uh, basting together. This is a very sticky glue. It gets all over the place because I don't have really steady hands so it's a little sh I get a little shaky and I'm not able to control or make a thin line. Uh, what I've seen online is that this is a very good fabric fusion. To make it permanent you use your iron. All right, the next product I decided to use was the Elmer's Glue family. And I started off with using the Elmer's Glue Washable Glue Stick. And as you can see, I've used it quite a bit. I got a package of two for a couple of dollars. This is a great glue for temporary uh, to hold pieces together until you stitch it. The only bad thing is that it picks up all the fibers and then it gets all over the place and I don't like it for that reason. Um, easier for me to control better than um, the, the bottle of glue that I Elmer's glue that I got here. Now I personally use this straight out of the bottle but I understand that if you mix some glue with some water and put it in a spray bottle you'll be able to spray this um, much more evenly and it won't be as tacky or gluey. Again, um, this held my stuff together but it was a little bit sloppy for me. Again, I don't have a steady hand so I got the glue all over the place. It did not, none of the products here have gummed up my needle. So 
I went ahead and I tried this Dritz basting spray. This, however, is a temporary adhesive. So if I wanted to do applique or sandwich, I would have to make it permanent by putting stitches in. This was nice. Uh, this was good. I was able to spray, put down my item. If it wasn't correct, I could pull it up and um, readjust it. Again, this item did not gum up my needle. The next item I purchased, I purchased at a big box hardware store. I was at the store with my husband and I saw this because we were looking for other type of glue uh, for household project. I looked, this, I looked at this and I read it and it said that I was able to use this on foam, fabric, foil, wood, metal, and more. Um, it was acid free and photo safe. So I figure, okay, I'm making wall hangings. Let me try this out. It, it, once it's dried, it becomes permanent. Once you iron it, it becomes permanent. Before it dries, before you iron it, this, you can reposition your item, what you're doing. I use this specifically for my wall hangings. I did not use it on any of my mitts, nor did I use it on any of the quilts that I made recently. Now, these sprays are all aerosol. These sprays have a high glue smell to them, and I did not use any of these sprays outside. So once I sprayed them, sprayed my items, it smelled like I was sniffing glue. It's the best way for me to, to explain it. I have allergies. And for the rest of the day after I used these items, I was sneezing all over the place. The other thing with using these uh, aerosol cans is that the spray gets all over the place. I would spray my small applique items on this board or on another board uh, cutting mat that I have and it would make it all gluey and all sticky and I wouldn't be able to cut or whatever. So with that being said, if you decide to use one of the aerosols, the best way to get the stickiness off, I swear to you, is this WD-40. Again, I am not endorsed by any of these companies. These are things that I've used myself to um, work on my projects. I spray a little bit of this WD-40 on a towel or paper towel and I was able to wipe up everything. Um, on this mat, I was able to wipe it up and it, and it kind of helped the mat a little to give it a... I don't take care of the mat like I'm supposed to, but I, you know, when I wiped up the glue off the mat, it kind of helped the mat a little. So with that being said, I'm going to show you my last product, which I endorse 100% and I recommend only because this glue really, really, really works and it's not aerosol. So once I was done using my aerosols like this or this or this, I was on a hunt to find something that was a pump spray. The aerosols, I, I'm, I'm in love with using a spray basting or spray fabric spray. It helps quite a bit keeping my fabric sandwiches together. I don't have the puckers or any of that underneath once I use it. So once I did my uh, research, I found that this company, Aileen's, was highly recommended. And I found that Aileen's, so far, is the only company that I found that has a permanent spray pump fabric fusion. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, the last item I put together was this quilt. This is a baby quilt. And with that being said, I wanted something that once it was washed, it would be okay. You know how babies are, they put everything in their mouth. So, I want to tell you this quilt is the very first quilt I've ever made that didn't have a wrinkle in the back or a fold or anything that wasn't smooth. It looks like a well-made quilt. I like it because I use this stuff. Now yes, I, spray, I had my batting, I sprayed on the batting, I put my fabric over my batting and it stayed. Once the fabric, the, uh, once the spray dried, I was not able to pull it apart without making any damage. The only negative thing about this is once you spray it, it, set, it recommends to leave it between two 
and four hours for it to dry. When I made this quilt, I added an additional four hours because I let it sit, I let the front sit for two hours after I sprayed it together, and then I let the back sit for two hours after I sprayed and put the fabric on. If you follow the instructions properly, you will get the results that you're looking for. Again, my quilt has no wrinkles or puckers in the back, nothing shifted, nothing moved. Now, because I'm a little bit of a negative Nelly, and this was the very first time I was using this fabric spray, and I wanted to prove that it really did work, yes, I did put some uh, uh, basting pins into my uh, quilt. Not as many as I would normally do, you know, Definitely in the corners, around the edges, and then in the center. Maybe a half a dozen, eight of them, to just make sure that everything did not move. I was pleasantly surprised at when everything was dried, I was able to stick it under my machine and not worry that I was going to get a fold or a pucker on the bottom of my quilt. Again, my non-paid recommendation or endor endorsement for a decent, good, well not decent, a good spray pump is this fa Fabric Fusion by Aileen's. Again, you have, you, you can choose whatever you like. You can do an aerosol, you can do uh, the Fabric Pump Spray, or you can even do um, a glue, whatever, whatever your budget calls for, you can do it. Now, with this Elmer's glue, again, it says you got to mix it with water, put it in a spray. But I don't, I am, I don't want to say I'm lazy. I just want to be more convenient at what I do. So thanks for watching. My name is Liz. We are at EMO's Creative Studio, where anything and everything you create is beautiful because you created it. Like, subscribe, check my Facebook page out at E M O S L I Z. I also have an Instagram page, E-M-O-S-L-I-Z. Until the next time, bye.